In this video, we're gonna do something a little bit different. We're not actually gonna go outside into the world and explore the incredible wonders of nature, unfortunately. I'm gonna challenge you to think a little bit different. Think outside the box, or for that matter, think there is no box or there is no spoon, depending on how you look at that. So the idea behind this is we're gonna do an experiment. Um, and the experiment is, do you really need a high res or high megapixel camera like the Sony a7R 4 61 megapixels, or the D850 at 47 or 48, I, I can't remember. Either way, these are both extremely high res cameras and they can be a little challenging to use because they're so high res. So the idea behind this is, do you actually need this? Or can you take a lower res picture in the same situation and use some modern AI or computer computational AI to up res it to the same resolution as one of these and can you, will you be able to tell the results? So what I'm gonna do, I've, I've already got the pictures, I'm gonna sit down and put it all together. I'm gonna use my Sony cameras for this because I just had them at the time. I have some images of an Osprey um, shot on the Sony A9, which is 24 megapixels. And I have that same exact bird, same exact time, shot on the A7R4, same settings, same lens. So almost identical shooting situation. And I'm gonna take the A9 image and I'm gonna use a piece of software called uh, Gigapixel AI, which is by Topaz. If you're not familiar with Topaz, they make really good products. I made a video on their denoise tool, which I think is just incredible. It's become a um, permanent part of my workflow. It's magic, you can find that video here. I'll put a link to it. But this focuses on their Gigapixel AI, the software that upscales images and makes them higher res. So I'm gonna take my A9 image again, and I'm gonna upscale it just a little bit past the resolution of the A7R4 because I can't seem to get the math to line up exactly the same. Then I'm gonna take the image in Photoshop and downscale it so it's the exact same dimensions as the A7R4. I'm gonna load them up in Lightroom 100% side by side and see if you can tell a difference. So let's go ahead and load up the images now and then we'll go through the whole process of how I went about upscaling the image. And again, it's just something to think about. So see if you can tell the difference, which image is the lower res image upscaled and which image is the original high res image. All right, so I've got both images here in Lightroom using the compare tool. Um, remember, one of these is the A7R4, 61 megapixels, and one is the A9, 24 megapixels. Same bird, um, same situation, just a few minutes of time passed, you know, for me to swap out the gear, same lens, same setup, pretty much an ideal place to do this experiment. So let's go ahead and zoom in one to one and see if we can tell a difference in each one of these images. Can you tell which one is which? Which one of these is the A9, which has been um, upscaled using AI, and which one is the A7R4, which is natively the large resolution or high resolution image? It's probably going to be kind of hard to tell here with YouTube's algorithm, they're probably gonna look identical. And I can tell you from my perspective, it's hard to tell anyways. Um, let's check out the feet. There's some good detail on this on these feet here. You can see the scales and the nails. Wow, I just <laughs> it's really hard to tell a difference, but I, I do have one that I think looks better than the other. Um, which one do you think is which? It's, mm, all right, we'll zoom out. And this is the A9 on the right. On the left, it's the A7R4. <laughs> so AI has done a good job. Um, I still think the A7R4 looks a little bit better. Um, just a little bit more detail, but that could be the overall image. It's really hard to determine. Um, and it could just be me mentally saying, well, this is the, the higher res one, so I like it better. But it's, it's almost impossible to tell the difference in the two. Let me go ahead and show you the original um, A9 file in comparison so you can see it at a lower res. Um, we'll bring it in, we'll go one to one. So you can see the detail on the A7R4 is pretty intense, but the A9 isn't because you can't zoom in as much. I mean, it's not still, it's a good shot and the A9 is great at what it does, but it's just not the same resolution. It's definitely a, a big difference. Go back to the upscaled one again, so you can get one more peek at it. And then we'll compare them one to one. Again, the A9 is on the right and the A7R4 is on the left. All right, let's go ahead and go over the actual upscaling process because it's really easy. I'm gonna take this original A9 file and I'm gonna open up Topaz Gigapixel. I'm gonna close off this little help menu. 
And I'm just going to drop the file right into Topaz. Um, I'm going to do face refinement on. I'm going to do the mode as auto. And I'm going to try to make the dimensions as close as possible to the A7R4 file. Um, so it was 1.59. Gets you really close. Um, and then you're going to just hit save and let Topaz do its thing. Um, this is all default settings here. I hit save and Topaz is busy now upscaling this image using AI. So here's the downside to this, or the only downside I could find, is this is extremely uh, resource intensive on your computer. I have a really beefy PC, a lot of RAM, real fast processor, and it took about four to five minutes for Topaz to go ahead and up res this image. And when it was done, it's a little bit larger than the A7R4. So I put it in Photoshop and downscaled it to be the exact same dimensions. But this that's it. It's really simple to use and actually quite effective. Very interesting uh, results to that experiment. We're living in a pretty interesting time where we're right on the age of computer and AI pretty much probably taking over everything. Um, I can't really tell too much of a difference in the images. I did like the original A7R4 image more than the up A9. That could just be the image. The lighting might have been a little bit better on the bird's face. I just liked that image a little bit better. I think eventually we'll get to a point where you can fly a drone out of your room, tell it what bird to go take a picture of, and it'll come back with the picture. But then at that point, you really have to ask yourself, is the bird even real? Because you weren't there to experience it. So. I don't know. The fun part for me is always going out there and doing it. This is a cool technique. If you have a lower res camera, you can up res your images very easily. Um, I'll put a link to the actual program in the description below. It is an affiliate link. What that means is if you buy that, pro, um, that program, I get compensated for referring the sale. It doesn't raise the price of the program at all. And another interesting thing to note, I do uh, get a lot of prints done, metal prints. I've fallen in love with metal prints. There's a local uh, print uh, shop that does them for me. I have like this one here. There's another one over here. They're highly reflective So you'll see my lights and stuff on the surface of them But when I was there last time I heard them talking about using the same software gigapixel So if their customers provide them with images that are too low of a resolution to print really big They throw it into gigapixel and they've been doing this business for over 30 years and they're printing some stuff like five feet by six feet on the output of this gigapixel and they're not having any issues with it. Again, pretty fascinating stuff. I don't know if it's ready to replace the high res camera yet, but it's definitely something to think about. Um, let me know what you thought. And I'd like to open up the end of this video to something new I would like to do. If you have any questions, put them in the comments below and then I'm gonna make a follow-up video where I try to answer those questions as best as possible. And I'm gonna start doing that with all my videos. So at the end, leave the questions in the comments below and then a few days later, I'll try to make a follow-up video where I actually answer all of those questions, give a little feedback. That way everybody can kind of get answers instead of having to dig through all of the comments. Um, and until next time, I'll see you later.